Nettie Johnson is a wife, mother, and certified health coach. A former tech trainer, Nettie developed a passion for health and education during her 10 years with the nation's leading weight loss company, which is Weight Watchers International. Good to have you with us today, Nettie. Thank you so much. And we're talking about putting your faith where your fork is. I love the title and uh, the, the, the theme behind it, you know, science-based, faith-empowered principle for healthy weight management. Yes. Notice that you say weight management, not necessarily weight loss. So tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. I'm assuming you've got a, a before and after and a, a moment when everything started clicking for you. Yeah, yeah. I think like so many um, in this nation, because weight is such a big problem, I struggled with my weight for most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was an overweight child. I was sedentary. Um, and the thing about it is, is that I didn't really think that weight was an issue. Mm -hmm. I didn't make a connection because I just thought I was fluffy. There yeah. were so many people around me that, that had um, extra weight on it. And things changed when my father passed away mm -hmm. in his sleep when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. um, we were surprised because my family kept saying over and over again, you know, daddy had not been sick. But when I looked back over it a couple of years later in my early 20s, I realized that daddy had been ill for quite some time. Mm -hmm. He had hypertension. He had a lot of chronic conditions that I just thought was part of what happened when you got older. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at how I could prevent diabetes and hypertension from impacting me because it was so prevalent in my family tree and I knew I needed to lose weight, mm -hmm. right? But I didn't know how. Right. So I began trying diets after diet. Did, did you have the yo-yo effect going on as absolutely, well? Absolutely, absolutely mm -hmm. for about 20 years. Wow. I would go up and down. I estimate that I've probably gained and lost over 300 pounds over wow. a 20 year period. Actually had to have my gallbladder removed because I Im, you know, impacted that organ from the up and down. In my efforts to make myself well, I was making myself sick. Wow. So what I realized is I needed to make a change, made that turn of the century decision in 2000, and I joined a weight loss company mm -hmm. um, for the fifth time. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you know how that is. Got the weight off, and over the next 10 years, as I was connected with this organization, Good Solid Program, I kept the weight off by and large aside from having babies, but here's the thing, I continue to struggle hmm. day in and day out. What was the struggle then? Thinking about what am I gonna eat? Should oh, I have eaten okay. this? Why did I eat that? I'm up a few <clears throat> pounds, I'm down a few pounds. And when I came home, I decided to leave the organization, great program. Um, I decided to come home and be with my children. I said, without these resources, I'm just going to get heavy again. The weight's going to come back in. And I remember very specifically one day when I was praying, I was like, Lord, I'm tired of struggling. Mm -hmm. And what I heard the Holy Spirit says is, you know, why are you struggling? Just give it to me. You're struggling because you choose to struggle. And so what I began to do is to look at food from a different perspective. I wasn't struggling with the pounds. I was struggling with the fact that I knew what to do, but was unwilling to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to change that from unwilling to unable or unable because basically I was relying on my strength, mm -hmm. my determination, my discipline. And it wasn't until I made it a God thing, mm -hmm. until I renewed my mind around what I was eating and why I was eating, that I was able to not only get more weight off actually, but keep the weight off without, without it being Without the stress. Such, without the stress and the struggle, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. The, in the title of your book, or the subtitle, yes. science-based, yes. faith-empowered. And a lot of people say, gosh, those two don't go together. You know, and they go together so beautifully. God mm -hmm. is so awesome and we're made in, in His image and God is omnipotent, He's omniscient, He knows all and He's blessed us with so much knowledge. We live in such a wonderful time. Think about all of the medical advances. Yet and still we have this knowledge, but scientists say that if we don't make some changes for the right. first time in modern history, our children's yeah. life expectancy will be less Going than down. ours. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. because of our lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I took not only the information that I gleaned from the decade with a you know very wonderful weight loss company, but I became a certified health coach where I looked not only at the nutrition aspects from other you know from a more broad spectrum or uh, approach, but also with um, exercise and behavior modification. And in each instance where things were substantial and were, were valid, I was able to marry it back to a biblical principle mm -hmm. that gave me and what I work with with my clients the ability to take what we know and say, this is how I'm going to use my faith to make it not just something that's head knowledge, but it's heart knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it shows itself yeah. in our daily lives. Let's take a look at just a couple broad strokes. You mentioned uh, what we eat, yes. uh, exercise, what we do, and then also behavior modification. Yes. Uh, Pick maybe one specific in, in those three categories sure. 
that really help will, will help people uh, maintain a more healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Well, let's talk about food mm -hmm. because um, actually when it comes to maintaining weight and fitness in particular, 85, 80 to 85 percent is due to nutrition. So I, I know, I don't know if any of you can relate to this. I was one of those that would work out for two or three hours at the gym and really feel good and then roll through the fast food and get a number nine <laughs> and wonder why the weight wasn't coming right. off. So you can't outrun, bike, or zumba a bad diet. So let's go to food. Mm -hmm. I think it actually starts with your mind. Hmm. It starts with your mind. And the first thing is to make it a God thing. Think about this. How often do we pray about our marriage decisions, mm -hmm. our career, mm -hmm. um, about even what choice we're going to make in the direction that we go when we're driving? But how often do we consult the Lord before we eat? What should we, what should we shop for today? Exactly. Yeah. Or oftentimes, literally, I, I always say I'm slow on the uptake. And I remember one day I was praying my regular grace, Lord, thank you for this food I'm about to receive to nourish my body. And the Holy Spirit said, look at your plate. There's nothing nutritious on there. Mm. I was always asking him to bless what I choose or what I chose. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it dawned on me to say, Lord, well, how about if I stop and allow you to guide and bless my food choices? Mm -hmm. So I think it starts with, first of all, let's take God out the periphery as it relates to our food. Um, I, I really do believe that in the body of Christ, Food is a protected vice. You know, we yeah. make bad choices. So if we bring God yeah. in and first eat foods close to the way God provided them for it, that's the first key. And I think that it's really, really key when it comes, if we were to eat an apple instead of apple pie a la mode, mm -hmm. if we were to choose foods that actually come from plants instead of food that is made in, in a, a plant, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, in a manufacturing plant. In a factory, the, yeah. Exactly. That change has shown time and time again that it can not only get us to a healthy weight, but the key is about the maintenance. It will help us to stay there because God made us. He knows what our body needs. You realize you're changing every church picnic. You know, <laughs> and late night, late night. potlucks. Potluck I, I, actually, yeah. I do a lot of speaking in churches and I challenge not only the, the, the congregation, but the culinary committees and those that are making that decisions to do a little bit of inventory, yeah. take an, a, an assessment of your congregation. If your congregation, 50, 60 percent of them have diabetes or hypertension, what we're serving should reflect that. Yeah. We should make some better choices, some godly choices, so that we're honoring God with our food choices. One of the stats, and I don't have it right in front of me here, but you, you, you talk about it, is that among the, the clergy, yes. the percentage of people that are like really overweight yeah. is like crazy, like 80 yeah. or something. 76%. 76%. 76%. Yeah. 76% of pastors. And, and, you know, so that shows how this is such a stronghold. Mm -hmm. It's an area in the body of Christ that we don't want to address. And here's the thing that is interesting. We're triune beings. If we neglect that physical aspect, all other aspects of our existence are going to suffer as well. We don't have the energy. We're living beneath our God-given potential and are unable to do completely the work that he called us to do because mm -hmm. we're dealing with all of these consequences from that one area where yeah. stronghold has been yeah. set up. Now your faith has been put to the test a little bit recently yes, by sir. some current events. You yeah. are a flood victim yes. from Louisiana. Yeah. Talk about how this latest test has, has affected your faith life. My, my, my. Yes, I, I live in Denham Springs, which is a small um, town just outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The devastation there is unwell. In, in Denham Springs in particular, 90% of the structures have been damaged with anywhere up to eight feet of water. My goodness. Um, a little bit over, almost two weeks ago, we were uh, evacuated by boat from my home. We got uh, a little shy of three feet in, our, in my home. My and evacuated by boat, um, I was in a shelter, and of course this opportunity had been presented several weeks ago, and I remember sitting there saying, in the shelter saying, well, Lord, I can't go. <laughs> and, you know, not only this, but I started to just rethink a lot of aspects of things that I had planned as far as work that he had given me to do. Because I was like, this is, you know, going on right now. But where faith comes in is I, I, I heard it from people. And then again, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me very clearly that if we take, if I take care of what God has given me to do, if I do my part, he will take care of the yeah. rest. Yeah. And so um, I'm continuing on in doing the work that he has. It's a step of obedience. It's a step of trust. And it's in this particular instance, I'm taking this you know, time away to come and, and, yeah. and, and to share this message and hopeful that it is a blessing, but God is able. And the same applies as it goes back to our, our health. If we do our part and mm -hmm. leave the rest to him, if we do our part to honor him with our bodies, we, we can just watch and see so many things improve.
Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Nettie, for making the decision to come up. Thank you. Uh, before we go, I've got just a, a minute left. For someone out there who's been struggling up and down, yeah. what's the one thing that you would encourage them to do to start today? Surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender. Make it a God thing. Don't try to go into some kind of, you know, huge change. Ask God to identify just one or two things. Make it really clear to you a couple of things that you can do, that you can do consistently. And when you are making those steps and making those choices, consult him. The Holy Spirit is ever present. He's speaking to us. We just have to slow down and listen and know that it is possible. With God, all things are possible. Amen to that. Thank you yeah. so much. Our guest today, Nettie Johnson, to connect with Nettie and pick up a copy of Put Your Faith Where Your Fork Is. As you can tell from our conversation today, this isn't just about calories and uh, carb counts. This is a, a whole transformation that starts uh, from the Holy Spirit and in and through our lives. You can go to NettieJohnson.com or as always go to Harvest-TV.com. You'll find an easy way to link back to her site and pick up a copy for yourself. Coming up later, Brian Bush with your prayer request. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's Connections. We'll be right back.